and Beliefs, Religious Delusion, and the Harsh Truth by Melissa Osaki, March 3, 2023. But most of us have heard it before. God will answer your prayers if you believe and trust in Him. He works in mysterious ways. And it makes no difference whether you've asked for His help or not. He will be there in your darkest hour. But do these preachers and proselytizers ever ask you what you've done to help yourself? Do they ever tell you that you're reckless, unthinking, and causing your own troubles? In all likelihood, that's what they're really thinking. But in an effort to avoid causing offense and losing donations from the faithful, they comfort you with soothing lies. Sometimes you think your life is falling apart whole time God is putting it all together. Unknown author. And while most of us here know that a God had nothing to do with our lives falling apart or getting better, the number of human beings who rely on an imaginary God is staggering. It's much easier to hand over responsibility to an outside force because the truth requires effort and hard work. And so, humanity avoids the truth like it's the plague. The truth can feel like a smack across the face, a punch to the gut, or a shock to the system. It is precisely in these fleeting jolts of awareness that we can begin to think and have clarity. One might compare it to a defibrillator that shocks the heart back to its normal rhythm. The truth brings light to the darkest places. Contact report 020. The facts of truth are important and that they are called by name. It would be unhelpful if fine phrases were used. The truth can only be represented by clear facts, but not by paraphrases and adornment. Such a form would be doomed to failure from the very beginning, which many truth-bringer had to experience before you. Their paraphrases and adornments aroused false impressions and resulted in everything being misrepresented and misinterpreted and expediently disseminated, leading to new false doctrines. Only small groups are useful when their members are fully and totally truthful. Through them, the truth will slowly be spread and will encompass humanity over generations and centuries. But the truth must be guaranteed in your group members. But this can only happen when the truth is brought to them with open words, even if these words of truth are hard. But this gives the certainty that no doubts, false doctrines, and wrong views undermine the meaning of the matter, which is of crucial importance. The group members, both present and future, who are destined for the mission, should be careful to grasp and champion the truth in its toughness, for only this is useful. The truth is hard and can never be presented in words of gentleness. They should bear that in mind. Let them reflect in peace on the old true prophets and their comrades in arms, whose truth teachings were much harsher in expression than is the case in your flyer. The truth is never welcome and is therefore met with hostility. The old prophets and their followers, who often had to give their lives for it, already experienced this, and the same will still be the case today and in the future time, even if no longer in the barbaric measure of the early days. I've already tried to explain this, almost with the same example, namely with Emmanuel but I do not believe that my statements have borne great fruit. I let the group critics know my explanations, because they should recognize the logic from it. A Talmud of Emmanuel, Chapter 23, The Greatest Commandment Therefore the words of truth will be harsh and without mercy, and many a person will seethe in rage because of them. The harsh words of truth themselves will be the instructive judgment and penalty for all those who live according to false teachings, and degrade the wisdom of the Spirit. A. Chapter 26. Proverbs of Wisdom But if humans do not think and seek, they will not be able to attain wisdom, and will remain fools. The wise do not moan about lost things, about the dead and about events of the past. Fools, however, cry over things that are not worth crying over, and thereby they increase their grief, privation, and misery. Those who have acquired sufficient wisdom and live according to the laws permit not even the slightest harming of creatures when they are without fault. Half-wits and fools who are not masters over their senses mistake harm for benefit, benefit for harm, and great sorrow for joy. Because people are not dedicated to wisdom and do not seek knowledge or recognize the laws, 
they harbor foolishness and vice. The dishonest, the stupid, grumpy, greedy, unscrupulous, uncouth, and the angry will suffer harm for being poor in consciousness. When people duly receive daily just a little wisdom in their consciousness, they will grow like the waxing moon during the first half of the lunar month. The damage inflicted by those who coddle and deceive their fellow human beings has become abundantly clear. Many are terrified of the consequences of speaking the truth, which has led to the truth being hidden and buried. We see the children being led to confusion and all forms of abuse. We see more and more discrimination in the name of social justice and political correctness. Theft, robbery, assault, murder, rape, child abuse, and all other forms of degeneracy are no longer punished in a logical and just manner. In the end, everything will lead to extreme hatred, revenge, and more brutal forms of violence. The not-too-distant future will see horrors beyond our comprehension, and it will lead to a lifetime burden on the psyche. The children are no longer able to cope with the normal stresses of life because their parents are incapable of instructing them. They are learning that it's better to cheat, lie, and take whatever you want from others. Working and striving are no longer deemed important for the development and progress of human beings. And with each passing year, the degeneracy becomes exponentially worse. The majority have gotten very badly out of control of the good human nature. Love, peace, freedom, and harmony have been abandoned in the confused quest for material riches, admiration, vices, and a false sense of security. Our beliefs and religious delusion have made us weak, feeble-minded, and unable to think. We witness false judgments on the truth-tellers while placing great esteem on the liars, frauds, and unjust ones. One only has to look at the current world situation to see the truth in these statements. The truth lies hidden just beneath the surface, but fortunately we know that there aren't enough shovels to bury the truth forever. A Arahat Athersada German English version book, page 144. Therefore, the truth is only intended for those who recognize all harshness and bitterness of the truth and the words that announce it, and who are able to process and evaluate it. All others are not yet ripe enough for it, and must become developed in lengthy clarification work for the understanding of the truth. This cognition is very bitter for all those human beings who awaken from their lethargy and have seen the connections. Within them blazes the bitterness of the inability to change all these occurrences, which have gotten very badly out of control of the good human nature and the human being in the shortest time, and to let the long-hoped-for paradise become reality. And because this is so, it is the highest obligation of all, those even only the halfway knowing ones, wherever willing ears are, to scatter the seeds of the teaching of the Spirit, and to support the work of those who announce harsh, and bitter words of the truth. They need this help because they are alone and stand against a thousand million fold army of human irrationality. The Brain on Meditation. And we still have much to learn about the human brain, but in recent years there have been many studies with neuroimaging used to study the brain while under various conditions. And while science may not yet have it all figured out, the results clearly indicate that something beneficial is happening when we meditate versus when we hold religious beliefs. Let's take a look at how meditation, religion, and fundamentalism affect the brain and overall aptitude. And in the following example, the blues and greens represent a calm and focused brain, while the reds and oranges represent a stressed and anxious brain. In a study from Biomed Research International, researchers have recorded some interesting findings on the positive effects of meditation. Over the past decade, mind and body practices, such as yoga and meditation, have raised interest in different scientific fields. In particular, the physiological mechanisms underlying the beneficial effects observed in meditators have been investigated. Neuroimaging studies have studied the effects of meditation on brain structure and function and findings have helped clarify the biological underpinnings of the positive effects of meditation practice and the possible integration of this technique in standard therapy. The large amount of data collected thus far allows drawing some conclusions about 
The Neural Effects of Meditation Practice, AIL meta-analysis of fMRI studies carried out during meditation, revealed a network of areas spanning from the occipital to the frontal lobes that was more highly activated during the meditation condition than the control condition. This network included the caudate nuclei and insula bilaterally, the precuneus, middle and superior temporal gyrus, and precentral gyrus in the left hemisphere, and the anterior cingulate cortex, superior frontal gyrus, parahippocampal gyrus, inferior parietal lobule angular gyrus, and middle occipital gyrus in the right hemisphere. We found that meditation practice was associated with increased gray matter volume in the frontal lobe at the level of the right anterior cingulate cortex and left middle and medial frontal gyrus. We also found increased gray matter volume in meditators at the level of the left precuneus and fusiform gyrus and the right thalamus. Conclusions Overall, Results of the present AL analysis suggest that meditation practice induces functional and structural brain modifications, especially in areas involved in self-referential processes, including self-awareness and self-regulation, as well as in areas involved in attention, executive functions, and memory formations. Structural and functional modifications in this network may be the biological substrate of the pervasive effect of meditation practice in everyday life. And are you a righty or a lefty, or both? Other brain meditation studies have shown that the connections between the left and right hemispheres of the brain become stronger and better connected during meditation, which allows us to access both sides of the brain simultaneously and with increasing balance. Brain imaging studies have shown that highly successful, massively creative people use both brain halves in a much more balanced and integrated way than the rest of us. After his brain was posthumously examined, Einstein was found to be in this category. I want to make my brain highly connected, balanced, and working in sync, like these superhumans. Is this possible? Yes, through meditation. The brain on God. Yeah, does the brain also get activated when someone is actively involved in religious rituals and beliefs? The brain certainly does get activated, but one might consider this activation less than beneficial. Multiple studies have reproduced similar effects. It has been shown that religion and religious beliefs activate the nucleus accumbens region of the brain. This area of the brain deals with stressful and pleasurable situations. It is also generally accepted in the field of neuroscience that this part of the brain processes rewards and functions as the addiction and compulsion center. When our study participants were instructed to think about a savior, about being with their families for eternity, about their heavenly rewards, their brains and bodies physically responded, says lead author Michael Ferguson, Ph.R.D., who carried out the study as a bioengineering graduate student at the University of Utah. Based on fMRI scans, the researchers found that powerful spiritual feelings were reproducibly associated with activation in the nucleus accumbens, a critical brain region for processing reward. Peak activity occurred about one, three seconds before participants pushed the button and was replicated in each of the four tasks. As participants were experiencing peak feelings, their hearts beat faster and their breathing deepened. An fMRI scan shows regions of the brain that become active when devoutly religious study participants have a spiritual experience, including a reward center in the brain, the nucleus accumbens. Photo credit, Jeffrey Anderson. The most widely accepted function of the nucleus accumbens is that this part of the brain produces a reward response by releasing high levels of dopamine. It has been determined that dopamine levels in the nucleus accumbens rise in response to both rewarding and unpleasant stimuli. In the same way that someone craves drugs, sex, food, etc., they can also crave religious activities that will produce an addictive response in the brain. Our primitive brains are hardwired to seek out behaviors that release dopamine, which gives you the feeling that you're on top of the world. In most cases, you want to repeat that experience over and over again. A 
but some might argue that an addiction to religion or religious behavior is better than other types of addictions. However, when the brain is seeking more of what it craves, logic and impulse control are often overtaken by desire. The right and left hemispheres aren't functioning optimally. Reason and empathy fail to take priority, and in some cases, they are completely shut down by the overwhelming urge for more dopamine. This can lead to further extreme beliefs such as authoritarianism and fundamentalism. The studies continue to suggest that religious believers are less able to reason and think logically when presented with complicated and conflict-related tasks. They regularly underperform when tested against non-religious groups in cognitive and reasoning tasks. A prominent hypothesis has emerged which suggests that the religiosity effect is underpinned by cognitive behavioral biases that cause poorer detection of situations in which intuition and logic are in conflict. Put simply, religious individuals are less likely to engage logical processes and be less efficient at detecting reasoning conflicts. Therefore, they are more likely to take intuitive answers at face value, and this impairs performance on intelligence tests. We are at the early stages of studying the effects of religion on the brain and body, but our primitive methods can still shed some light on the greater picture. For those who can think clearly, the obvious danger associated with rigid or fundamentalist beliefs is a no-brainer, but it may take us decades to get closer to the real scientific truth. We will likely need more fine-tuning of our instruments and apparatus in order to thoroughly investigate the effects of religion on the brain. However, on the surface, there are clearly perceivable differences when we calm our mind and focus rather than when we hold beliefs that have no basis in reality. I suspect that our current studies don't go nearly far enough to show the detrimental effects of religious delusion. But can we trust the scientists to be honest when they do finally discover the harsh truth? What does Billy have to say about religious delusion and the brain? Sects. Main religions as mother sects and their advisors on sects, Christian churches, are the most extensive and most enormous religious sects, and with their criminal machinations have brought since time immemorial the most murders, manslaughters, treacheries, crimes, persecutions, and exploitations to the human kind of earth, for which the Inquisition is well the best example. And all this through an artificially created belief in an imaginary god, which exists in an irrational and dangerous way only as a genetically rooted sickness in the brain of the human being. God is fundamentally an imaginary creation of the human being, or rather the human brain. This imaginary God has been inherited by human beings for millions of years in a form of a schizophrenic epileptic delusion and is fixed in the temporal lobe as well as in the parietal lobe. When religious experiences manifest, Forms of schizophrenic delusions are formed at the same time and are, therefore, a result of a genetically inherited religious belief. And for anyone interested in learning meditation based on the spiritual teaching for self-cognition, which is based in absolute logic according to the laws of sevenness, the introduction to meditation by Billy Meyer is highly recommended. Meditation is a lifetime journey of exploration and discovery. The meditation does not simply serve the relaxation, which is why it is also recommended by doctors. No, it serves especially the self-disciplining of the human being, the schooling of his or her consciousness, the cognition and the creating of inner peace, and the equalizedness, and the actual mastering of life in general. If the human being studies this book accurately and heedfully, and acts according to the presented knowledge, then these and many other cognitions will be granted to him or her.